all right uh, in, a, in the last session we we understand how we will be getting the users from the database and how we can load the users from the database uh, using the spring security default schema but as we guys are discussing yesterday like in most of the time we'll be having our own table uh, that our company will be defining and the goal for today i will be creating a table here like yesterday we have stored all our users over here inside the users table right over here right we have two users over here like that we will be creating one more table today and let's say this table is like you know something random let's say i'm gonna create a table called student or i'm gonna create a table called customer where i'll be storing my users maybe it can be anything right let's say i have a table called student and let's say i have the id okay and uh, the student will have the username or let's say if you have a custom requirement you do not want to store the username you want to store the email or you want to store both right let's say you want to store the user email and the email will be used as a username then okay we, we will have email over here for the student and let's say uh, the password okay and let's say like um, uh, you know the role right let's say these are the, everything i'm storing it in one side inside one table only uh, role email will be used as the username and uh, i have the password as well otherwise let me change it to user and later i'll introduce one more field for email or now only i'll introduce email okay not a problem so username pass role and email we have uh, all these things okay uh, so that you know, you know i can just um, show you some different different implementation in future so I have the ID, ID I'll make it auto incremented and rest of the things are uh, all are voucher only. So that's good. Let me go ahead and create the table and I'll do a close. So my student table has been created. Okay. So what, let's say what I will be doing, imagine if somebody registers, he'll have data like this. Let's say user is uh, a V, password is a V123, role is um, let's say admin, or role is let's say user and the email is avi at the rate gmail.com okay something like this you have a user over here okay uh, the entire user details goes over here the password is one to avi123 the user is avi the role is user and there goes his email let's just click on apply and apply and do a close so we have a student table and we have one record inserted over here to the student table okay i hope everything is making sense right now now imagine i will tell you that load your users from this table let's say you have a couple of user let me create one more user let's say um let's say ramya okay password let's say ramya123 and role is is also an user and her email is ramya at the rate gmail.com okay so we have two users entry over here to my student table and let's say they want to log in uh, and whenever they are logging in uh, let's say whenever you are bootstrapping your uh, application right here let's say if you are bootstrapping your bootstrapping your application let's say i'm going to do run as run on server and i am going to start this application out next finish so in this case okay the application is starting okay we got the login form and let's say i'm gonna do uh, uh let's say i'm gonna do login over here okay let's say if i'm gonna log in over here using a b and a b one two three uh then i should be able to log in or if i'm gonna do ramya and ramya one two three then my application should be loading the data from this database okay i should be using this username and password from my custom table okay so how i will be achieving that okay so for now guys i just want to hear it out from you okay whenever i'm gonna do a sign in over here let's say somebody is coming over here and doing a sign in let's say somebody is typing horse horse one two three okay somebody is trying to log in over here now you know what will be going on behind the scene we like you know how the user horse uh like you know how his detail will be queried like using what method like whatever you know so far how the sign in pro process will happen and from where this user will be searched right now in our application anyone 
लोड मेथड सो विच लोड मेथड वाई यू आर सिंग जेडीबीसी यूज डिटेल सर्विस Uh, we uh, created the bean for jdbc user exactly so we created the bean for jdbc user details manager so i'm sure inside this we have the load one second jdbc user details manager and we should have the method for load user user by username okay so this method will be called and using the jdbc template they will be running a query and this is the query they will be running right this uh, variable has been initialized over here i just did a control k over here to do a search control k and i'll find that particular reference this is the select a statement which will run on my users table users is the default table that i was using previously this table from here only the data will be uh, looked open and the data will be loaded uh, right here okay using this query this is the select query which will be running behind the scene but right now i do not want to query using um, using this sql query because if i'll be looking for my username and password and all this thing from the users table then obviously i do not want to use i do not want to use this users table right so this table i do not want to use i want to use this table okay so based on my current implementation i know that whenever i'll be running my application if i'll be running uh, my application uh, inside the security config i have created the bean for this so this class load user method load users by username method will be used and obviously the underlying implementation is like you know spring security has provided for me and they are recommending us to use like you know uh, use the user table or the users table that we have discussed earlier but i do not want to do that okay so in this case what what is the solution like generally think in this case what should you do you do not want to use the spring security best implementation so what can you do over here anyone we have to create one class with you have to user details manager which implements and create bean for that okay we you might need to create something similar to user jdbc user details manager isn't it digna yes, yes yes okay and you should be writing your own load users by username method from there you will yes. be writing your custom code to search data from the student table isn't it yes from this table okay so basically the end goal is simple whenever we'll be signing in whenever somebody is giving the details we do not want to run the jdbc user details manager bean that we have created rather we want to write our own class something like jdbc user details manager um and obviously like like the jdbc user details manager implements the user details manager and here they have the load user by username method but they do not have it over here because it also extends from the user details service where we have the load users by username method so this method you want to override and give it a implementation okay so let's just do that so this is my user detail service so just to simplify it a little bit okay so we have uh, let me control c and control v it let me remove this uh, things over here okay in memory and blah 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 okay i will remove all these guys and uh, now okay before all this you have one more interface right and that is user detail service so user details manager has the crowd method and the super interface is user detail service maybe i'll just do control c control v okay and i'll put it over here and that's called user details service okay and the user detail service actually have this load user by username method right load user by username okay and you're going to be giving the username it's going to get you the user data back okay and this user details manager extends to this interface and provides the further method to do the crud okay and on top of this we have to write our custom implementation right let's say right now i can directly uh, my class that i'll be creating let's say this is my custom class 
if I'll be directly extending to this interface, then I have to give the implementation for this, 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 and this. If I'll be directly extending to or implementing to this interface, then I have to only give the implementation for the load user by username method. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do at first, I'm going to be directly implementing to this method, uh, low, uh, user detail service, this class I'll be implementing to and over, over, overloading this method load user by username i'll be overriding this particular method i'm sorry about it i'll be overriding this and i'll be giving it my own implementation okay because right now my end goal is whenever somebody sign sign in i want to load his data i know spring security framework internally is going to call the load user by username method based on the implementation that you have given based on the in memory or based on the jdbc user detail service or based on our own implementation here we will be writing our own implementation by implementing this interface. So I'll be creating, I'll be treating this as a service interface and I'll be creating my service impo. So I'll create a class and I will be writing, uh, I'll be, I'll be creating a package called service. And I'm going to be writing a method, uh, writing a class called user details service impl. Okay. There is an impl class I'm creating. And here I'll be implementing user details service. Okay. Something like this. It has one method. I have to override it over here. There you go. And inside this method right now, I have to write my stuffs how to load user from the db okay so obviously thing is very simple here i'll be loading my data uh, loading my user from the db and will be returning that i'll make it a i'll be creating the bean for this so previously what we have done so uh, like you know right now uh, if you are just going to write at the rate a bean over here or sorry at the rate uh, component over here or if it is a service you can write at the rate service over here if you're going to write this, this will be registered with your Spring Framework right now. And you are expecting this, this load user by username method will be called. Let's just see what is going to happen, guys. If I'm going to be a restart my application, okay, I'm going to stop this and I'm going to be restarting my application like this. Okay, I'll be starting my application up. Let's just see what is going to happen, whether this method is getting called or not. Okay, uh, so maybe I can just keep a sysout method over here, sysout uh, over here. And I'll say my custom class, uh, this method got called, okay? Okay, method called, okay? Let's just see whether this method got called or not. Let me just restart the server. Okay, server is restarting. Cool, the server is started. I'll go to Google Chrome. Okay, let's just try to do the sign in. Okay, let me just give any random user. Okay, anyhow, this user does not exist. Let me see what is going to happen. Sign in. Now see what, what it is giving. No authentication provider found for some authentication token. Okay, we do not understand this message. I know about this. But now the thing is, is it, it is not giving us any message like user not found or bad credential or something like that. It is saying no authentication provider found. That means previously we were using JDBC authentication and right now I'm creating one more implementation for the uh, type of authentication that I want to do. I want to do the authentication from my custom database right over here from my custom table that I have in the database from here I want to load the user, right? So right now you have two implementation. Here also you are creating a bean, you have, you have done something like this, you think, right? Over here in the security, you have created something public. Uh, what is that? User details service impl. That is your custom class, right? This is the class that I have just created. Let's say user details service impl like this and return a new user detail service impl. Okay, something like this and you have written a bean, uh, something right over here. And you can remove that at the service over here and you're creating and registering the bean for this. Now see, the framework has two method, this one and this one, right? Two bean it has, right? So now which one to call? Obviously the authentication provider 
I think that is a component over there we'll be seeing later, like the framework, the security framework is trying to do the authentication, but it is confused. Like it has to look like, like whenever you'll be giving the credential over here, it has to load the user using this way of implementation, like this class, that is a load user by username method. It need to look for that particular, um, you know, it, it will be running that particular query that I have shown you. Okay, and it will be looking the data from the users table, it should be doing that authentication, or it should be doing the authentication using this class that you are currently writing right now. Okay, it is completely confused. So I'm going to say, okay, do not use this class. Okay, just use this class. This is our custom class that we have just created. You can see last time also, if you're going to see in your log, the line that you have written on your custom class that is also not been printed to the console this line my custom class load user by username method called see this method was never been called because there is an ambiguity or there is a confusion by the security framework that which of the which style of authentication that has to use whether this class load user by username method will be called or this class load user by username method will be called so i have commented this particular bin do a control s okay let me just reload my thing okay so let's just see whether right now my class load user by username method will be called or not. Okay. I'll come over here. I'll give a random user do a sign in. Okay. Now there you go. User detail service returned null, which is, which is an interface contract violation. Obviously right now that proves that my uh, class load user by username method got called. And obviously this is returning null whilst the framework is not recommending us to return this, this has to return a user, right? And also I can see my custom class load user by username method called. That means your method only got invoked, right? So here you have to give the implementation right now, how to load the user from the database. Okay. Now how to load the user from the database? Like somebody will be giving the username over here. Imagine. Okay that username that you are giving over here will be collected over here as well. Okay. Now using by capturing this username, you have to look for that user, whether that exists in the database or not. If exist, then you have to return that user. If does not exist, then you have to throw an exception that user does not exist in the database, uh, create a account first. Okay. So, so far the things are making sense. Yes or no guys. It, yes. 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 Sir. Can someone else confirm as well, guys? It's making sense. Uh, Abhidas, yes. Question. Yeah. In the onion spring security version, we need to manually, uh, if we create the man, uh, custom implementation of the user detail survey, then hmm. we have to manually tell the authentication manager about it. Right now, we don't need, we just need to create. Uh, not like that. Previously, also, if you, you just need to register the bean like this, you can also manually let the like you know authentication manager know about this but i have not discussed about those things sir so i'm just ignoring these things um, a little bit but yeah this is another way you just create the bean this will be automatically register okay or if you don't want to create the bean like this just go to your own class like wherever you have created this class right here just create the bean over here by writing it a component or service or something else. That's it, right? Now, this is the service implementation, which will be used by security framework whenever it is going to try to load the user uh, from the database. Okay. Oh, All right. So we are in sync, yeah. right? Yeah. Plus, yes. Here we don't need to create any authentication provider, right? No authentication provider. See that, that component I have, I have not, I have not discussed. So there is a authentication provider, which is going to look looking right now and looking for all your details, but I have not spoke about the authentication provider, right? But there is some guy. That's why I'm saying the framework is looking for this particular method to oh, look, okay. uh, to look for the user from the database, right? So framework means whatever the guy you are telling about right now, what we're going to be talking about that particular thing later. later. Yeah, sure. Okay. So I'm just ignoring it a little bit to avoid the complexity. Okay. So, uh, yeah, cool. So right now we have the, we have to load the user by the username from the DB. Now, can you guys tell me, uh, how can you load the user from the database? Like what you have to do? You have to make a database call. Like how can you make a call? Yes. 
JDBC template. Okay, that, that is one way to do. You can use the JDBC API of Spring Framework. Any other thing? Any other way? JPA. JPA, you can use by using the repository interface from the Spring Boot if you're using JPA repository that we'll be doing in the next week. Any other way? Hibernate query. Hibernate query using the get method of the Hibernate, you can also do the query, okay? So you have many different ways you can face the data from the database. I am gonna be using a very simple way. That will be using the JDBC template because it's, uh, like, you know, we already have the JDBC dependency in our class path. So it will be easy for me to uh, achieve this. So I'm gonna write JDBC template, JDBC template, and I will be writing at AutoWare over here. Okay, and now using the JDBC template, I will be running a query, right? So using the JDBC template, I will be running a query. Okay, so how to query data, anyone? I'll be writing query, right? The query method I'll be using like this dot query method. You can either do a query or if you're looking for a specific user, right? You are looking for a specific user. You can also do a query for object. The query method returns the collection. The query for object returns a specific class that you're going to be defining over here. Okay. All right. So what is the query? Um, like, you know, what is the, like, what is the, uh, SQL, you're, you're gonna be running over here. So you're gonna be running a SQL, right? Right over here. Yeah, select star from, yeah, exactly. So table I'll be, student. yes, table student, yes. And then you have to query with the username, right? Whatever the username yes. they're giving over here, let's say they're giving Anil here, we have to look for if this user exists in the database, right? So let's just try to do that. Let's just, let's just write string SQL. Let's just do a select star from our table name. We have to query from this database, student, student database, right? Okay. Copy this okay. and let's just go over here to STS and paste it over here. Select star from student where okay. uh, username, right? Yes. Username is equal to something. Okay. It can be anything. It can be anything. Whatever the user, whoever the user is trying to log in, you have to pass his details over here. Okay. So um, in the query for object, which method will be using? There are a lot of query for object method, right? Uh, SQL, row mapper, maybe something, this one we can use, but uh, that question mark, how we can pass, where is that method? Query for object, uh, query for object, query for object. Um, one second. Uh, let me just, let me just check over there. Let me go to my class. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna be running this SQL, and then I need to define uh, like whenever I I will run this particular uh, statement, whenever I'll be running that particular statement in my DB. For an example, I'll copy this guy. Control C. I will go to my DB. I will run this statement. Okay, do a run. Okay, it is not running because I have to give the data. Let's say the data is uh, a B. User of the column name. Column name user? Yeah. Username. Not. Oh, sorry, sorry. Student, huh? Student table, right? Yeah, correct, correct. User only. Yeah. yeah. So maybe the query will be like this where user is equal to, um, let's say, uh, a B. Okay. Let's just run this. It's working. I'll copy this query only. I'll go to my STS and I'll paste it over here. Okay. I'll remove this database schema name. Anyhow, we mentioned it in the URL in our data source connection. And uh, this part, we will not hard code. We will run this query, okay? So this is my SQL. Now, whenever we are running that query right here, it is giving us all this data, right? It is returning us this data. Now, how can I store this data that is returning? This query is returning. How can I store this uh, data in our Java code, obviously? I have to, uh, like this query for object is going to return me all those data, right? So those data I will represent in form of a DTO. So I have a DTO over here. Maybe I can just say something like a student DTO I can create over here. And here I'll be having, I'll be copying all those, uh, you know, variable names, uh, copy uh, fill names, copy fill names. Okay, I'll go over here and I will paste it right here. And I'm going to be writing private uh, int ID. Okay. And I will be writing private string user. Okay. And I'll be writing private string password. Right. 
and I'll be writing private string uh, role okay because we have only one role but in real time we can have many roles so we'll be fixing this one later private string email okay we have all these guys over here now I can click on source generate uh, getters and setters for all these guys right and we have the DTO available I made sure like all my uh, database name uh, column names are same as my variable names over here why because uh, like whenever I'll be running this query I'll be getting my data back right uh, I'll be getting my data back and all those data I want to map it whatever like whenever I'll be running this it is going to get me this guy right and all this data I want to fetch from these columns and I want to map it to the to the DTO that I have created and I want to inject all the data to all these variables that's why I made my column name and my uh, you know uh, variable name same over here that's why I, I can use sorry I have opened a lot of classes right uh, let me just stop my server for a minute otherwise it will keep on bugging me and I will just close all my classes here okay uh, and I will also close the JDBC template class okay DTO I'll save it I'll go over here okay whenever I'll be running this uh, SQL it will get me all those um, you know all those um, you know results set back and I will extract the data from there and I'll map it to my DTO and for that I'll take a help of a row mapper so I think it's called bean property row mapper if I'm not wrong bean property row mapper and here you can define your class name that you want to map to let's say I want to map to the result I want to map it to student DTO dot class right dot class something like this okay uh, and obviously I'll be creating a new bean property row mapper the object of new bean property row mapper this class job is when this SQL runs whatever the result set we will, we're going to be getting back it will extract the data and map it to all this variables right now okay so we'll extract the user data over here okay now um, obviously and the last parameter is this guy right so this one will be my username so I will pass in the username over here so I think this username will be replaced with this question mark right so if it is Avi right this will be Avi and this Avi will be replaced over here if someone gives Anil this uh, will be Anil and this will be replaced like this SQL that we are running this will be replaced with anil okay now I think we have the entire query for object ready SQL we are running and this is the query parameter that we have to reset and whenever we get the result we're going to be extracting it and setting it to this DTO do a control one over here and assign the statement to the new local variable and basically uh, you know return the student DTO object over here so um, yeah that's good so we have the query for object ready maybe I will just uh, bring this thing down so that it will be looking a little bit of EG to eyes okay something like this cool so we have the student DTO we faced right so first of all we have to check if the student DTO uh, like the object is null right if the student DTO uh, if that's equals to equals to null that means we don't have a uh, you know um, we, do, we do not have that particular object available let's say if it is a nil right right now in my database we do not have any users called a nil we have Abhi and Ramya so this this particular method won't be getting us any data right the query for object won't be getting us any data if this will be null then I'll be throwing an exception so I will throw new runtime exception okay and I'm going to say that user does not exist okay something like this and if the user exists then that's great uh, runtime exception runtime oh sorry runtime exception runtime exception okay this one okay so if the user exists then what we have to do we have to return that user to the framework right so now if the user exists so from here we can we can be getting all the details right so how can we create a new user because we have to create a new user and we have to return it because return type is user user details so how we can create a user details object anyone to convert a DTO class to user uh, uh -huh. to 
No, okay, okay, no. I, I'm just asking how to create a user details object in Spring Security. Anyone? User, user class, user. right? You can you can do new user or you can just also use the users class, right? I told you a user class, user, then dot, uh, you know, with username like this and the username from where you'll get from here, student DTO. I'm gonna do student DTO dot get user. Okay, this is my username. Then password, password from where I'll be getting from the user DTO only, student DTO only, copy this, put it over here and just do get password, okay? And also I'm gonna be doing uh, the role, the role where I'll be getting, I'm also storing the role over there. So I'm gonna do student DTO dot get role, right? Get role, something like this, right? And then I'm gonna be doing dot build. And this is going to get me what? Command one, assign statement to a new local variable. This is going to get me the user details, right? This is going to get me the new user object. Return this over here, okay? That's it. So I, I'm gonna move this thing a little bit right here and I'm gonna be building a new user and I'll be returning the same user over here, okay? So now if I'm gonna do a control S, I think I am all set. Okay, so let's just try to see whether this uh, this thing we can run or not. Okay, now let's just try to, um, you know, start our application. We have some problem. Let's just see what is that. Okay, no qualifying bean for JDBC template available. Okay, let's just create the JDBC template bean right now because by default the JDBC template bean is not available so we cannot auto it because this is not Spring Boot. We have to create it by ourselves, right? Let's just do that. So I will go over here, okay? I will go to my pom.xml, okay? And right over here, I, I already have the uh, Spring ORM over here, right? Which, which pulls in the JDBC as well. So JDBC, I do not have to add. The JDBC dependency is already there. So I just have to create the JDBC template object, right? So I will do what? I will go to the config file, right? Maybe uh, the app security config file and right here, I can create a private uh, JD, sorry, the bin should be public, right? Public JDBC template, okay? Okay, and JDBC template over here. And I will, I will do what? I will make it a bin, okay? And I will create a, I'll return a new JDBC template object over here, okay? And I have to pass in a data source so data source bean, I think we have created yesterday in our config session. So here we, ha we have already created a data source bean. I can just utilize the data source bean. So what I can just do, I can go to my config. I can, um, I can basically write a data source over here like this. Data source, data source, and I can make it auto word right here because we have created already this bean and give it to this like this. Okay, and we are done. We are done with creating the JDBC template object. Or if you do not want to write AutoWare specifically over here, whenever you are creating the JDBC template object, give the data source as a parameter to this bean. So whenever Spring will be creating the bean for a JDBC template, it will know that it has a data source dependency. It will look for that dependency and automatically AutoWare it. You do not have to specify it AutoWare over here not required. This is not required, right? So I can safely remove this. So I have created my JDBC template bean right now. Let's just go to my user detail service impl, okay? And let's just restart our application and let's just see what is going to happen, all right? So now my application started fine. Let's just see in the console. Uh, no such bean definition, at least, okay, JDBC template, Okay, we have created the JDBC template, right? Uh, user detail service simple, unsatisfied dependency expressed through JDBC template, right? I think uh, inside the, okay, I have not saved this file. Let's just do a control S, let's just save it and let's just redeploy one more time. All right, so it is starting up, cool. I think it started without any error, which is good. 
Now let's just go over here and let's just try to look for an user. Okay, let's just go to the login page. Let's say I'm gonna look, look, uh, look uh, for a user called Ramya and her password is Ramya123. Okay, Ramya123, enter. And she's logged in, which is good. Now, uh, if I'm gonna write hello over here, hello is a secure endpoint and I'm, I'm able to log in over here. So I'm gonna do log out. Okay, if I'm gonna log in with Abhi and the password is Abhi123, this user also exists and also I'm gonna log in with Abhi, right? So if I'm gonna be logging in with, let's say Ramesh and obviously Ramesh does not exist in my database and we should be getting an error. But why we're getting this error? Incorrect result size expected one actual zero. Are you, why, why we're getting this error guys, anyone? Query for object, right? Because right now we are trying to uh, write a method over here. And this method is the query for object method, which is querying the data. If this one will be Ramesh, I'm getting, I'm querying with the Ramesh username. The query for object is throwing an exception that well, the Ramesh object does not exist. And the query for object always expect, a, always expect and uh, you know, record back but it is not getting that record and that's why I think it is throwing that exception. Uh, so uh, incorrect size, expected one, actual zero. It's expecting at least one record back. So even though it is uh, it is never going to return null or something, this null check is useless. The, the flow will never come to over here, okay? If this will not return you any zero, the internal implementation is like, it will throw you an exception directly, right? So I think query for object, this method is not uh, good for implementation because what we want, if the user does not exist, let's say this user does not exist, we want to give a valid error message like user does not exist previously the way we used to get, right? So the way we can fix it, maybe I'll go over here instead of writing query for object, I'll write query over here, okay? But the problem is the query method returns a collection, not a particular object. So I will change the return type and I'm gonna write student DTO list, okay? But if the object exists, let's say I'm querying with Avilas, it is going to return the collection only, but inside that collection only one object will be there. Because let's say you are querying with, uh, let's say a guy uh, called Ramya you're looking for. Oh, you're trying to log in with Ramya, then only one Ramya is available because only one user can be available in your in our database. Um, if we are like, not not like, you know, only one user Ramya can, can exist. There can be many Ramya as well. But the thing is like, you know, um, we are going to look for the specific Ramya that we are looking for. We have only one user right now called Ramya. We'll see like if we have multiple users called Ramya, then how we can handle that situation. But right now, if someone is looking for uh, looking to log in with Ramya's credential right over here. Then with this user we'll search, but internally we'll use this query method instead of query for object. So if we are query with Ramya, this will get us a list of users whose name is Ramya. But over here in our case, this will be only one user which does exist in the database. So what I'm gonna do uh, from here right now, I'm gonna do the null check if the list is um, if the list dot uh, if the list dot size uh, size is equal to equal to zero, that means no user exists. User does not exist. If the user exists, if we get something in the list, right? I will just get the user from the zeroth index, and I'll do the same for everything, right? Like you know every other variables that I have. I will I will get the password from the zeroth guy who is present inside the zeroth index, right? Because we have only one user retrieved from the database. And I'll just do the same over here, okay? Let's just see if my implementation worked, then we'll just debug and we'll see it once before we wrap up. Now, if I'm gonna restart my application, okay, it's restarted. So I'll go over here and let's say I'm gonna be logging in right now. And let's say I'm gonna log in with Ramya and her password is Ramya123. Do I enter? and C is right now logged in, okay? Let's say I'm gonna log out, okay? And let's say I'm gonna log, log in with, let's say Ramesh. This user does not exist, by the way, do enter. Now it is giving us user does not exist. So this is a, a right approach to go with. And um, even though you are only getting one user back over here, uh, 
but just handle it with the list over here and then fetch that user and uh, from the zeroth index and then uh, apply the get user, get password and get role method. Let's just see like, you know, what is happening with a debugging for a moment, right? So I'm gonna, uh, you know, you know, start my server in debug mode for a minute just to see like, you know, everything is making sense or not right now. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna start my server in debug mode, okay? Just want to see the things are working fine. All right. Cool. So I will go to Google Chrome. Let's say I'm going to look for a user called Abhi and Abhi123. Do a sign in. Now see which method got called. It should be load user by username method from my custom implementation, right? Now it is going to do a query. Let me just do a, um, you know, Query right now, it will do a query. You can see the username that we are getting over here is a B. That's the user that we have entered over here. And now if I'll go over here, if I'll run this uh, statement, okay, it should get me the data from the DB. Um, is there any other thing? Yeah, uh, let me just do a step over. Okay, it's taking a while, but I think we should be getting the result back. Yeah, so now if I'll put my uh, cursor over here, you can see only one user, only one DTO object is there in the list, and that is this object only, right? That is this AV, and you can see ID is one, password is whatever, role is whatever, user name is this one, right? Now, if I will do a step over right here, obviously the size is not empty, if the size is empty only, we are throwing the exception, okay? And now if, as the size is not empty, we're gonna be getting that user from the zeroth index and we'll be creating the user details, okay? And we'll be returning that particular user details that we created over here. As you can see, we have only given the details like uh, username and password and the role, the authorities over here is like, you know, uh, the user over here, but the rest of the things like enabled, credential non-expired, uh, account non-logged, and all these properties of the user class has been automatically set to default value. And if you're gonna do resume, and obviously this guy will be locked in, right? So the things are working good. Okay, before we wrap up, I have one last question for you guys. This is a question and a trick. Uh, let's just see if you guys can solve it. Let's say right now the client has changed the requirement and the client is saying, okay, I want my user not to use, not to use username while logging in. I want my user to log in with email. Okay, let's say, um, you know, if Abhilas want to log in, this Avi user want to log in, he has to log in with this email, okay? And if the Ramya want to log, wants to log in, she needs to put his email on her username, right? Now, if that implementation will not work, right? If I'll do a logout over here, and if, let's say I'm gonna write Abhi at the rate gmail.com, and if I'm gonna give the password Abhi123, enter, am I logged in? Oh, I think again the uh, the debugging is happening. I do not want uh, to debug anything. I'm gonna do a resume. Okay, so I'll come over here to my Google Chrome. See, it is saying user does not exist. If I'm right, Ramya the right Gmail dot com and Ramya one two three, I'm also not able to log in. How to fix this off? Anyone? I want to log in using the email, not using the username. Yes. Instead of running, we have to use e email. Exactly. 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 So whenever I'm I'm creating the user user object over here, instead giving instead of using the username with the user details that I have over here, the user is this one. I have to use email. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go back to my SDS and this one I'll be writing get email. Okay, and that's it. If you're gonna resume right now. The user also, where user, that query also you have to change. Right? Exactly, query also we have to change. Where is that? Uh, uh, like uh, select star from aware, the email is something, okay? Because they have to put the email 
in the form, right? So we have to capture that. We have to capture that over here. The email will come over here as a username and whatever it is coming, we have to replace it with this question mark. So this will be email, this will be email and that I'll be replacing with that question mark over here. Okay, so let's just see if that works. Now let's just do a enter again. Uh, I'm gonna write Ramya at the rate gmail.com Ramya123, enter. Okay, see, log, uh, see logged in. Now I can just do a logout. I can write obi at the rate gmail.com obi123, enter. And obi is also logged in, right? Everything making sense guys so far? Can you just confirm me? That's it for today. Um, and uh, in the next session, maybe we will try to write the complete CRUD and then we will complete the security stuff. Maybe two more sessions will take. Then we're gonna be starting with Spring Boot security uh, after a couple of sessions, right? So I think this is making a little bit of sense right now, user digital service, so that whenever we will be going through the auto configuration of Spring Boot, the things will be easy. So you go ahead and you practice this one. But right now the problem is, see, now the problem what will happen, you know, if you wanna do register right now, okay, if, you, if somebody tries to do register, okay, here if, if let's say somebody, let's say Ramesh want to do the registration, let's say Ramesh is the username, Ramesh is the password, do the registration, it will not work. Because uh, right now, no qualifying bin for JDBC user details manager is available. So it is saying that in your registration form, the way you have implemented, the, if you're gonna go back to your project, if you're gonna go to the controller, the registration controller, the way you have written right here, uh, right here uh, in the, you know, uh, so, uh, I think in the controller section, right? Registration controller, here the way you are doing the registration, you are creating the user uh, by collecting the details from the form and you are using JDBC user details manager, but you have removed it. Now this create user method you cannot use. You have to write the implementation for this create user. You have you can also give the feature to the user to update his profile if he if he or she wants to delete the account by calling the delete user method. You can you can you have already given the implementation for the load user method. Like you can give your own implementation, and we're gonna be deep uh, deep dive into that in our next session, and that will be on Thursday. Okay. Any other questions before I wrap up, guys? Anyone having any other questions? All good. Okay. Next yeah. you can tell about the uh, authentication manager also, right? Yeah, authentication manager, I think, uh, let's just see, uh, Anil, I will uh, complete everything in the next couple of uh, days, right? The basic thing. And then yeah. once I jump to that uh, Spring Boot part, right? Then okay. we will talk about the entire flow. Maybe I'll tell you a little bit, little bit about authentication object and authentication manager. Maybe a little bit about the flow, maybe in the next class or next to next class. But uh, from after the next week, the next the upcoming week, which is coming, the Spring Boot we will be going with. Okay. Oh, Spring Boot only. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this one you guys just do practice and be okay with all these terms and components that we are using. That is my solo intention because here you will be configuring everything by yourself only, right, Anil? So it will be like, you know, easier for you guys, like to digest the concept. Okay? Yes. Cool. Any other questions you guys have? Like anyone? No, right? Uh, uh, yeah. No, no. Yeah. You are using here the lazy annotation, right? Yes. Yeah. So you didn't, you created two beings, no, right? No, I, I have only one bin at the time, uh, but the lazy annotation I have used because I got that circular uh, uh, dependency. circular dependency problem I got. To avoid that, I am to break that circular dependency, I'm using lazy so that this bin will be lazily initialized. And even one of the bin it needs while it need to be created, if that bin is getting created or that will be on creation, uh, that, that, that bin is on creation, uh, you should wait till that bean got created. It will let that particular class to be initialized. Then the controller class will be triggered. Now, previously, this class, uh, whenever it is getting created, it needs uh, one of the bean, maybe this bean. And that time, this bean 
was also whenever it is looking for this bin that bin that bin also needs for this controller class to get created or something is happening so something was happening at the time that's why to break that pattern i have used at lazy to lazily initialize this if you are using spring boot then you can you can use the allow circular dependency to true you can set that property yes yes anil so i will anyhow i'll i'll remove lazy yeah yeah normally if two classes is there you can call you can call one class into another one that class itself calling this class then only it will uh that depends that depends if the if the if the framework is doing some twist also then also you're going to be having that kind of problem uh, no. okay, okay. the the pro, okay. the thing is a circular dependency if it is coming in your application is a bad design right but yes. it's not always bad design because in this case how should i use it is, do you have any other approach to fix this particular problem you should be using it something like this but maybe there is some other improvements we can do in our configuration class or maybe the spring uh, security is using something behind the scene and that is causing the circular dependency problem just to avoid that i have used this one but i'll be removing it no worries okay perfect so thank you guys thank you for joining in a saturday and um, i'll see you guys in the next session which will be on thursday for you guys next week no kafka session kafka session will be on next uh, next to next wednesday okay so see you guys on the security session in the next uh, wednesday uh, next thursday okay bye bye and have a good day bye bye happy weekend guys bye bye bye